Excellent. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to cover here today. Um, and it's around Michigan's voluntary protection programs. Really a great program that has been established here at the state for really multiple decades and, and, and gives employers like yourselves a, a good opportunity to recognize some of the efforts that you've had to build your own health and safety management systems. Um, so for today, we're going to cover what that process looks like. Um, whether you're from a general industry perspective or you're from a construction project, fixed site or mobile location, what would those requirements be from an MVP perspective? We're going to look at things of like injury rates and, and how you apply those when you fill out your application. We're also going to review what we're looking for from a MyOSHA perspective. So when we come to your location, and we get to look at evaluating your health and safety management systems, you know, and, and it's probably unique to your industry, your company itself. So we'll share with you what we'd be looking for in some of those expectations that go with it. You know, we're going to talk about some of the benefits associated with MVP from program inspection exemption all the way to sharing best practices uh, throughout our, our safety network here. So hopefully there's there's questions that we can answer that, depending on where you're at in the process itself. And uh, we'll walk you through that here today. Hey, Aaron, um, there's a chat comment that perhaps it was thought that there would be something posted in the chat. I don't know if some folks thought that you would you would have posted something in the chat. I have posted some things in the chat. Um, we have a copy of today's presentation is what I have posted in the, in the chat itself. And uh, we can share the presentation outside of that if you need it as well. Okay, the comment is, is that they can't see the posted presentation in the chat. I will uh, I will forward that as, a, as an email to follow up and, and I'll repost it at the end of our session here today. Thank you, Eric. Great. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the MVP process or our voluntary protection program itself. And, and here in the state, we have multiple venues of how you reach that level of effectiveness. And when we talk about MVPP or voluntary protection program in Michigan, we're talking about a partnership with MIOSHA and general industry or construction sites themselves. Um, really, once again, working together to create that safe working environment. And for our facilities and companies that are looking to apply for this level of status and award, we have four different levels that we typically look at across an organization. Um, we start with companies that may be already in what we call our M Sharp program, where we have companies that have effective health and safety management systems. They've been partnering with MyOSHA for a period of time, and now they want to move into you know, an exemplary health and safety management stage, and we can help them along that path. And we'll break out each one of these here in a little bit more detail as we go through. We have a, a construction focus. We have both a general industry focus for evaluations and a construction. So we try to look at all entities across the, the state and see where we can provide help and venue for these support systems. And then as our companies are really moving towards that exemplary health and safety um, management system, we have what's considered a rising star. And so these are typically companies that have robust health and safety management systems. There's probably some areas of opportunity or gaps that need to be closed off, or maybe their injury rate isn't exactly where they want it to be at this point. So we have the opportunity to um, look at them as a rising star partner with the hope that within a year or so, they can put plans in place to become a star. So, our star is really the pinnacle of what we look at from uh, that collaboration. Those are companies that, once again, have exemplary health and safety management systems, 
And year in and year out, they typically will have injury rates that are at or below the industry standard itself. So once again, that would be the, the star goal. So we get questions very frequently like, why, why should we choose our MVPP? What, what is it that makes sense as an organization that we work towards this status? Um, and this process has been around now for several decades, both here in the state as well as the federal programs through the nation. Um, and so we've got some good statistics that show the benefits associated with being in this program itself. Um, typically, our VTV sites, their injury rates are significantly lower than their competitors within the same industry. And you know, we see incident rates, you know, recordable type rates of 28% or lower in many cases. Um, same thing with our work loss day case rates. Um, it's the significant points go down significantly. And, and there's a cost that they're saved. So when companies aren't you know, spending money on workman's compensation costs or losses, they can utilize that for other functions within, within employment. So what we typically see is that companies that have applied or are working towards that MVP goal, they may not be at that injury rate where they want to be at this point, but they certainly can get there. And We've seen it over and over again that a lot of our sites have not only been able to work injury free for a day, a week, a month, sometimes it's years and even decades. And so it really is a great way to utilize your resources. You know, along with those fewer injuries and illnesses that you typically see, you said it's great for your business itself. Once again, a reduction in some of your potential premiums, your work costs. And what I find some of the greatest value is that you're a model of excellence across your industry and across the state. So when you show that you can work, you know, with significant less injuries, and in many cases work without injury at all, you're, you're creating that belief network that it can be done. And I know several of our, our facilities that have either just started in the MVP program and others that have been there for, for many years have proven that you know, with robust health and safety management systems, they're able to eliminate or reduce the risk of injuries in many cases. We always like to talk about employee morale. You know, there are ups and downs in, in businesses depending on circumstances, but we typically see companies that are in our MVP program, the, the employee morale is typically very high. You know, employees are, are typically engaged in the process. They can share their concerns. They can share their suggestions. They're part of that process, and it really is a benefit for the organization. And then ultimately, you know, we understand how challenging it can be to have a robust health and safety management system. So we like to recognize companies that have taken that effort on and want to continue with that moving forward. One of the areas that we really like to talk about is best practices. And organizations that have developed these health and safety management systems typically have moved far beyond just a basic level of compliance, where best practices is part of what they do. And in many cases, they're setting that standard moving forward. Um, so being within our MVP group, both from a general industry and construction standpoint, we routinely share those best practices, whether it's through our MyOSHA news articles, whether it's our meetings that we facilitate throughout the year, or just being able to go to these other locations within our state to learn from them. And that's one thing I think we do very well from a health and safety perspective is share what's working from our site and our perspective. And if you can learn from that, please do so. Now, we often get the question that, you know, what's the difference between Michigan's voluntary protection program and the federal voluntary protection program? So it's, it's, it's not uncommon where we have companies that have sites or construction projects in Michigan and other states, and there may be a choice to be within both those programs. Uh, or, 
from a general overview, the systems or the, the policy that are very similar. Um, the major differences that you see between the Michigan Voluntary Protection Program and the federal program is that one, Michigan is a state based plan. So that affords us the opportunity to have health and safety regulations that are as equivalent or at least as effective as the federal programs themselves. But it also gives us the freedom to go above and beyond. So you'll see some of our health and safety rules and regulations may be a little bit more intricate or defined based on the state's needs. So that's one element of the difference. The second element that's really different is around how we report our injuries or illnesses. So within Michigan, if you're going to apply for the MVP process, apply for that status itself, we look at your injury rates for the last three consecutive years. And it is our hope that your injury rates are at or below the injury standard for those three years. Um, where OSHA, if you are a federal state, if you are a federal state like Wisconsin or other states, then they actually look at the average over those three years. So those are really the, the significant differences. But from a, an application standpoint, an evaluation standpoint, even a reevaluation standpoint, the systems are very similar. So as I was just talking about one of the parts of our application, we're going to ask for your injury and illness data. And there are several areas that we can focus on. So to be a Michigan star facility or project or site, we ask that, like I said, you have at least three, your last three consecutive years are at or below the industry average for your industry. Now, there are times when you may have injuries at your site um, or you fall without, outside that spectrum where we would consider you to be a, be a rising star. So you may still have some very robust health and safety management systems, but there's probably some things you need to do to close that gap. And so we, we may recognize your facility as a rising star if two out of the last three years are at or below the industry average. And then if that's the case, you know, we would work with you to hopefully develop an improvement plan. So within that next year or so, you have the ability and hopefully you meet that Michigan star status. But both the rising star and the Michigan star comes with the program exemptions and uh, incorporates the best practices we refer to. The other element around injury and illness rates is around small employers. So we understand that not all facilities, not all projects are created equally. Um, not all uh, facilities have the same level of resources, budgeting, timeframes. And so we do have a component within our policy to look at an adjustment where if it is a small employer, let's look at the injury rates for the last three out of the four years so that you know just one recordable can typically uh, move you past those injury rates in some cases. So we try to consider the whole picture when we look at injury rates. So how do you find that information you know, when it comes to injury rates? What, what are we looking for? So when we look at your application, we're going to ask you to look at your industry based on the NAICS code or your North American Industry Classification System. So this is the same code that you would all have on your OSHA 300 day summary. So what you post every year is going to have your SICK or your NAICS code to identify what type of industry or construction type of component you work with. Once you know that NAICS code, now you can compare yourself to other companies within the same industry that you work with. And so we ask that you look at um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, where you would look at the last three calendar years, say, as a company, as a site, as a location, are we at or below those injury rates for the last three consecutive years? And that, that information you'll populate within our application itself. So if we look at our companies, we've got 25 
MVP companies, both from a general industry and construction standpoint. Just a really great diverse group of companies ranging in various industries, from petrochemical to wood manufacturing to mobile construction. And so this is really a great gateway to learn from companies that either have just started down that process or companies that have been in our MVP program, uh, in some cases for decades itself. So we do have a list of, of companies that are posted on our website, and we can work with these companies moving forward and mentor you along the way. Just like our general industry, we have a, a construction component to the MVP process. Uh, currently, we have two companies within our construction MVP group. Um, Holly Construction, they are a resident contractor at another one of our MVP sites. And we have Black & Veatch, which is our first mobile workforce contractor. So with construction, um, obviously there are different uh, hazards that you may be looking at. There are different environments with, that are routinely changing, but the evaluation around your health and safety management system will be the same. And so we ask that construction companies, they fall into th one of three items. One, they could be a resident contractor like Holly Construction, where you're performing work at a site routinely, um, in some case for, for years or indefinitely to a degree. Uh, our mobile workforce is an option where if your work is taking you to other parts of the state, um, whether it's performing service or projects of any kind, maybe that is the right fit for your group. Or it could be a fixed space project where you're performing a project which is typically in a two to five year range at a location, and you want to partner with Myosha during that process so that you know we're working through all the health and safety components and evaluating your system through that. So we got a lot of flexibility when it comes to that construction component itself, working with that partnership itself. Now, one other element to the MVP process when we evaluate both your health and your safety side of things, we also review the process safety elements associated with your facility. So not all sites or locations fall under the process safety management standard. Um, but if your site does fall within that standard itself, we would also do a comprehensive evaluation of that process safety management, along with the industrial hygiene and safety elements themselves. Um, for those uh, facilities that are in that process, uh, we do have three of our, our sites right now that are covered under process safety management, also risk management planning as well. So we would take a look at those, those systems that are in place and ensure that you, you have that level of compliance and understanding and incorporated with that as well. So we initially we talked about one of our options being our demonstration program. So we have companies that are currently M Sharp programs here in the state of Michigan. M Sharp is another excellent program where companies have been able to develop very effective health and safety management systems, where they're you know they're typically going to be smaller companies, companies of 250 employees or less, and we have a caveat about 500 across the, the entire company. These are companies that are working in high hazard industries that have really developed their system typically over years, and they also get that level of program exemption for a period of time. But at some point, and it's typically a three year process, our M sharp sites um, are either no longer part of that program or they move on to something else. And so we like to challenge our M sharp sites to say, hey, once we have uh, effective systems, can we get them to that exemplary stage? And so we'll work with you to develop those plans and hopefully bridge that gap so that you can become part of our MVP network. And that process can potentially go on indefinitely if you continue to meet the, the status requirements for MVP. 
pause there. Any questions in the chat line, Eric? Nope. All right, so let's let's take a, a deeper dive and look at how we evaluate the process. So within my OSHA's MVP program, we're doing a diligent review of your health and safety management system. You know, facilities are very unique in what they do from how they operate, what they maintain, the service they provide, the projects they build. And we understand that. And so we want to understand what, what your journey looks like. And when we go through that process, we're doing a critical review on what we call the five, five significant elements. And we're gonna we're gonna walk through these in some detail. But we'll we'll cover them at, at least at a high level now, where we look at your safety culture built on management leadership and commitment. And that's really the starting point in an organization. How engaged are your employees in that process? How actively are they supporting it? Are they part of it? Has your site identified the hazards that you have there on site? And do you have a plan to help prevent, control, or mitigate some of that risk? And last but not least, it's around health and safety training. You know, incorporating really all levels of your organization through the, that process itself. And you'll see in the application process, there'll be segments of each part of those elements that identify what your what your journey looks like, what your process looks like, and you can share that with us at my own. So when we let's take each one of these elements a little bit more detail. Um, so the first and foremost, like I said, we talk about management, leadership, and commitment. And to be part of our voluntary protection program, we actually have built within our application a letter of commitment. And we want that letter of commitment signed by members of your organization to, to state that, yes, we are going to move forward and develop effective, very robust health and safety management system. We want to see that commitment that there's going to be resources available from budgeting, planning, accountability, all those components built around there that have probably taken your organization months, years, maybe decades to some degree um, based on where you're at along that path. And we want to see that commitment not only for your employees, but really anybody at your location. It could be visitors, contractors, or anybody that works uh, or comes to your, your location. And I think the, the continued effort, you know, we when we evaluate your process, if the, the hope is that you meet that level of status, that you continue to evaluate yourself. So continue to improve upon your health and safety programs. Continue to improve your health and safety management systems. Our second element is around employee involvement. Employee involvement is another critical part to our process. And we want to come to your location, wherever that may be within the state of Michigan. And we want to see employees actively engaged in the process. You now they should have a strong mindset of not only what MVP is about, but their roles and function within the health and safety of your processes themselves. So tying that together, with the management commitment are, are two very strong elements that, that are critical for success. When we perform the evaluation, we're going to look at what you have from your internal process for identifying hazards. You know, looking at your work site, you know, whether that's a general industry system where maybe that process changes from time to time to a construction site that could change every minute. So what, what are you doing as an organization to understand what those hazards are, whether that comes from an inspection process, hazard recognition, whatever systems or tools you utilize to ensure that you have that understanding. 
And I think what goes really hand in hand with that is, OK, now that we understand those hazards. So as a company, you have a system in place to really clearly define those. How do we manage that? How do we reduce that level of risk? How do we create that safe work environment for our employees? And that's our real challenge. And it's a challenge that's probably very unique from one site to one company each day in and day out. So questions that we would be asking that are built within the application talk about how does your organization handle management of change? How, what happens when you get new equipment on board or maybe new material or chemicals? How are your employees integrated in that process to ensure that the health and safety of the workforce continues? We look at other preventative systems in place, you know, things like occupational health. What kind of processes do you have in place to help either reduce risk proactively when it comes to occupational injuries? Or how do you manage that care after the fact? Um, are you maintaining your systems? Do you have a reliability program in place to help not only identify hazards, but correct those along the way through? So once again, every, every site may be unique, but we're looking for what your system provides to ensure that, that quality. And our, our last element that we focus on from an evaluation team is around health and safety training. And once again, this level of training, when we look at MVP facilities, we're looking at health and safety training at all levels of the organization. That could be your employee that's operating a particular process. It could be a construction employee that's um, you know, working in, in, a, in a construction site. It could be your frontline supervisors, your lead management really everybody along that path and that journey um, to show really health and safety robust training itself. And this is where we, we look at a lot of the health and safety programs that you may be applicable to your site or your location and how you've implemented that. And so what we typically see from MVP sites, um, they're quite passionate when it comes to health and safety training and communicating that process throughout the site. Eric, uh, take a pause there. Is there any other questions through our chat? Not at this time. Thank you, sir. So let's talk about, you know, what happens from an on-site review perspective. So hopefully you have a chance to look at our application as a team, you've, you've filled in the information about what your processes look like. You've described them to detail that hopefully we can understand them and begin the dialogue. Um, and if once that application is approved, then we will set up time to come to your location. And let's walk through what that, what that typically looks like. And so when we have that conversation, we will usually will schedule a date and time with, with you that makes sense as your organization. It also makes sense with the consultants that will be part of the team. But it's, it's usually about a three to five day review process. We will, we will typically um, start with the opening conference, sharing what the MVP process is like, what we will be looking for. Um, and it also gives us an opportunity to learn about your company, your services that you provide. Um, and so we, we break that into uh, integrating, make sure that we have both management and labor part of those discussions. You know, this is really a, a team based effort in your organization, and, and we want to hear that team story. You know, we're going to facilitate what's considered a site walkthrough, where um, if it's a first time application, It'll typically be myself as the process lead, and we will have a safety specialist and an industrial hygiene specialist that will walk through the facility. And when we do that, you know, we're looking for either conditions that need to be fixed, uh, maybe observations of employees performing tasks. Um, but when we make those observations, we're going to share that with you. And even though they may be a violatory condition, there's no financial penalty associated with that. 
So we're doing this from an educational perspective to share those with you with the hope that those get closed out. Um, and so on top of the site walkthrough, we're going to look at you know your programs. We're going to do a pretty extensive document review on the programs that you have that are applicable to your site. And then along that that path that when you walk, we're going to we're going to perform interviews to your the various levels of employees to understand are the MVP systems that you have in place truly being effective within within your group. And this will be an open dialogue. We, we want to have dialogues uh, along that walkthrough, along our reviews, a continued dialogue throughout the process of what we're seeing, what we're observing, and areas of opportunity if any are identified, along with best practices that we're seeing and we can share. So when I get asked, you know, what's Jimmy, what's the what's the purpose of the evaluation itself? You know, if we fill out our application and we've defined what we've done, what, what is uh, the team here at Myosha going to do? And and really, our challenge is to look at your systems and truly find that they're effective and are moving to that exemplary stage. So we don't expect perfection. It's uh, you know, we know companies are are working hard in, in many systems. But we do expect that you try to continually improve. So whether you're on the just a, the front end of this journey or you've been part of that process for years in many cases, we want to see that continually improvement effort. So you know it's not uncommon when we walk to your facility or we look at your programs that we find opportunities, right? And we bring a, a wide spectrum of, of skills and experience. Um, as you know, myself and my counterparts, we, we travel through the state every week and we work through various organizations where we get to you know, look at not only strengths and weaknesses, but share the best practices. So as we evaluate your process, we're going we're gonna to share that with you. We're going to share with you some of the strengths that we've, we've recognized. Or, hey, here's an opportunity for improvement that you may want to close the gap on. And by the way, here are some ways that you may want to consider itself. So it's a great open dialogue where we can share those conversations. And then ultimately, you know, based on that evaluation, we're going to make a determination of whether or not your company itself has met that eligibility to be at that MVP star level itself or one of the other uh, levels like rising star or others that meet your needs. So let's talk a little bit about what we would look at from a document perspective. So if we filled out the application, um, we would have a chance to review what you've documented. Um, typically, uh, before we come on site, we would begin to have that dialogue and request information to get a better understanding of your processes. So depending on the type of construction site or general industry location, we would ask for various documents. Um, you know, from industrial hygiene perspective, we may look at things like hazardous communication, um, could be a respiratory protection program if that's applicable. From a safety specialist uh, perspective, we may request things like confined space entry logs, um, blackout tagout procedures. Um, and it's going to vary depending again what you provide in the industry that you work with. Once again, we're trying to understand your story. We want to understand your health and safety management systems and approach and, and incorporate that together. So as we mentioned in our site walkthrough, as we walk through the facility with your team, whoever that may be, Usually there's at least one designated rep and there a lot of times that may be members of your safety committee or others that you want to be part of the process. You know, we're going to look at things from not only a compliance side, but a best practice side. And so if I walk through a facility and I'll give an example, maybe I see a guard not in place on a piece of equipment. We'll share that observation with you with the hope that we can get that guard fixed itself. 
or close out those items. Um, or maybe there's a recommendation to uh, close out a particular item and we'll share with you, you know, possible ways to do that itself. So we'll, we'll share that along the way. The other part of our walkthrough is really observing employees as they're performing their tasks. You know, not only just are they wearing the right personal protective equipment, but what conversations are they having? What tasks are they involved with? You know, are your systems in place so that, you know, they truly are creating a safe work environment or minimizing that risk to the level that they can? So those will be some of the dialogues that we have. So I have uh, what's considered just a, a preliminary agenda. And what we try to do when we, we do initial, once we've looked at your application and we've scheduled some time that work works within your, your limits as well. As we mentioned, it's typically a three to five day process. And we try to be very flexible on this because we don't want to necessarily impact your operations or products. And we want to we want to understand your systems without impeding your process to the degree that we can. And so the way we typically will do that is we'll have an on-site component where, you know, we're going to look at your health and safety systems. Hopefully we've had, you know, several weeks to look at some of your programs and we can have that dialogue with it. Um, but you'll see built within every one of our, our agendas, you know, we make sure that we're providing that input to you throughout the whole process. So we should be sharing, hey, here's what we observed. Here's some recommending ways to close this or abate this item if we find anything. Or, you know, this is really a best practice. You know, this is something that would be benefit, you know, our other MVP facilities as well as members of the state of Michigan. And so that'll build upon each other, you know, through the course of that three to five day process where we move from looking at your, your documents to understanding how they're implemented in the workplace. So we'll, we'll continue to do that survey of the facility. And then what we do on our second and third day is we move into informal interviews where we have dialogues with uh, your operators, your maintenance staff, supervisors, management, all levels of the organization so we can truly understand how that process works. And uh, so eventually at the end of that week or that time frame, we've consolidated that information itself, you know, based on our document review, based on our site assessment, based on our interviews with, with all the levels of, of your group, the, the group's going to make a formal recommendation based on that observation itself. And, and hopefully that recommendation is to be part of our MVP group itself. So once again, this agenda, we keep it somewhat fluid. Uh, we understand that companies sometimes have 24 seven operations or work at different times. And so we manage that around that itself. Any, any questions from those on the call? Uh, any any questions at this point? There's nothing in the chat. Thank you, Eric. So let's take a little deeper dive on what that on-site review process would look like. And so once again, we, we would typically come to your location where you're performing that work or where your facility is located, and it's gonna be a team of three. We'll, we'll typically have a team lead, we'll have a safety specialist and an industrial hygienist as, as we had mentioned as well. So let's break out each one of those in a little bit more detail. So from a safety perspective, and we have safety and health consultants throughout the state of Michigan that work for Myosha. These consultants um, work with organizations such as yourselves and others to help them improve their systems. And so they routinely do that throughout the course of the week. And so when they come to your site location, they're already going to have an idea of what your health and safety system is based on what you provided with your application. But they're going to look at things specific to their discipline as well. So 
that safety consultant is going to look at things like personal protective equipment, how it's being utilized, how it's how employees are trained about it. You know, if you have systems like robotics, you know, they're going to look at, you know, the different requirements associated with those type of, of processes itself. Um, you know, maybe it's electrical safe work practices or machine guarding. You know, anything that a normal compliance officer would look for from a safety perspective, they will do that level of review, both from a document perspective as well as uh, the, the walkthrough observations itself. Well, as I mentioned, with the another counterpart being an industrial hygiene as part of the, the conversations and part of the assessment, they're going to look at the things that are specific to their discipline. We're going to look at your systems to say, you know, are there, um, you know, basically, you know, pending the site that you have, your programs are going to vary. You know, some sites might have a, a medical surveillance program. Others might have bloodborne infectious disease program for first aid responders. Um, we may ask for, you know, have you done any IH monitoring for air contaminants, depending on your industry? You know, if you're working in a foundry operation, am I looking at things like lead or asbestos? Or if I'm working on a construction site, have you done airborne monitoring for like silica, things like silica? Um, and every every situation or every project or industry is going to be somewhat unique, but that would be the level of review that they would have based on on your processes themselves. So, a great opportunity again, once again, from an educational perspective, to share those findings with you, or share practices that have worked very well. So, you know, during this process, we want a really a, a two way dialogue to share those items with you. And once again, it's not from a compliance standpoint, it's from an educational perspective, once again. As I had mentioned earlier, if your facility does uh, fall under process safety management standard, so that means that you have chemicals that have exceeded or met the criteria to fall under process safety management, we would do a separate evaluation um, to that, that process itself. And what we typically do from process safety management is we follow the national emphasis program and the dynamic list questions that look through the 14 elements of process safety. So we would look at everything from your process hazard analysis all the way through mechanical integrity documents that are associated with your process. So like I mentioned earlier, you know, there are we we do have several sites that fall within the process safety management. And if your location or location you're working in that does, we would we would integrate that as well for for a review. Okay. So what do we do when it comes to reporting? Now, so when we perform our walkthroughs and our observations, um, we want the facility or company to have that opportunity to abate or close those items out. And so it's not uncommon as we walk through a facility, if we find an item that needs to be fixed or or policy or procedure that needs to be modified. If the companies fix or abate those items while we're there on site, then we don't transfer them over into a report. Um, but if they do, and it's not uncommon um, that if we have items that we find, we give the facility or company time to close those items out. And so over the course of that week, we, we give about a seven day period where we provide a report. And a lot of times we'll do this before we leave. Um, if you're a general industry facility, we give you 30 days to fix those items. And we'll create what's called a hazard survey report. And what that will do is it'll itemize. Here's the finding that we had. You know, this is, and we shared this conversation with you during the course of our walkthroughs. Uh, here's the condition that we were witnessing, and here's how you can abate or close those items out. And so we give an allotment of 30 days for companies to close those items out um, for general industry. And then those in the construction field, we give seven days. Uh, the difference being that in construction sites, that environment or that process or task are much more fluid. They, they tend to change much more rapidly than a general industry process. 
And so we want to make sure we're removing that potential hazard in a timely fashion. So that would be the, the first report that you would see if there were any observations or findings. Any questions from our team members on that? There's a couple of questions in the chat. Um, one has to do with union representation being present for employee interviews. And then there's another question, since OSHA doesn't have a robotic standard, will they look at the RIA standards to see if we comply with that? Okay, great questions, thank you, Eric. So let's, let's address the, the first question around union representation. Um, with union representation, there's, there's several different requirements that we ask for. Um, you know, we have both union and non-union facilities uh, part of our MVP network today. Um, with union representation, we ask that in the initial letter of commitment um, from our management and union representatives, that their that union representation is not only identified, but they're critically part of that process. We want to see that, that level of engagement and joint working relationship. Um, when it comes to interviewing employees, certainly just like from a compliance standpoint, if the employee wants to have union representation part of that conversation, they certainly can. And we'll talk about interviewers coming up, but that's that we typically will have that as a confidential setting where we can have a good open dialogue to understand, uh, you know, how that employee fits within your health and safety system itself. But union representation is definitely encouraged and it's represented through our network right now. And the second question is around robotic safety. So great question. So we look at from a safety perspective, you know, robotic systems um, are very common throughout the state of Michigan and through the country for that matter. Um, where we don't specifically have a standard, and MyOSHA does not have a specific standard on robotics. We will look at how the facility is creating that safe work environment. So we may refer to Act 154 under our general duty clause for representing that. And typically companies that have robotics um, or practices that utilize are, are using some sort of consensus standard. So that could be the B11 ANSI standard, um, could be NFPA 70E for electrical safe work practices, um, could be NFPA 654 for combustible dust. Um, it's really the choice of the company or industry that you're in. So whatever consensus standard that you're utilizing, that's what we'll ask you to see how effective it is and how that's been implemented on site. Great question. Eric, any other questions come through? Uh, that's all for now. All right, thank you, sir. Let's talk a little bit about our interview. So we just briefly talked about this from a union representation. And so when we perform our evaluation on site, once again, it's our, the challenge that we have is understanding what your process looks like. And truly, is it is it effective within your system? So when we walk through your your location or your job or your project, whatever that may be, we like to have informal conversations with employees when it's appropriate. You know, we don't want to disturb your process or put anybody in a health and safety predicament. So, but if they are able to talk for thirty seconds or a minute or five minutes off the line, we like to do that. And we like to do that as they're performing their tasks or working within those areas. So that's part of our, our conversations that we have. And if union representation wants to be part of that and the employee wants to be part of that, that that's that's great. Uh, the other area that we focus is on is formal interviews. And so before we perform our evaluation, we would ask the company for a list of employees. And we would look at not only the names of the employees, but years of service and their positions themselves. 
And what we're trying to do is really get a good cross-functional approach to interviewing employees throughout the process. So we typically will interview about 10 to 20 percent of your workforce that's designated with your site that you're applying towards. And that'll vary once again built based on your processes. But the, once again, it's our opportunity to talk to employees that are part of your process and understand um, how that's being applied. So I, I do like to talk about incentive programs because it is part of our requirements that are built within our policy and procedure manual that's available online. Um, and when we talk about incentive programs, part of our application and, and review is going to look at, is there an incentive programs that you have at your location? Now, companies are allowed to provide some level of incentive programs. Uh, what the MVP program does is it strongly discourages against incentive programs that are based on injury or rate-based systems. Um, we don't want to see companies uh, providing incentives for employees for working without injury. Um, we want to know that they are preventing injuries. You know, they are providing near misses uh, and providing a conversation. So incentive programs that are built around actively engaging employees or participating in the process, they're encouraged. We just don't want to see incentive programs that are built so that we prevent employees from providing that level of input. And so you can get more clarity on that within our policy and procedure manual, but it's something that we do want to share with those that, that are part of this process. All right, so let's talk about that on-site review. So once again, we should be having a dialogue with all the members that are part of that group. We're going to share with you once again what we observed we're going to share with you any opportunities that are identified and every day we build in a debriefing process where you bring members of your team and that's up to who who you want on that group so that we can share those findings and recommendations as they're occurring um, we're going to perform what's called a closing conference at the end of the week where we'll do a recap of all the items that we've seen observed and shared and really kind of a path forward moving forward. So once again, we we as a assessment team want to share that with you with your group. We will itemize any hazards that haven't been abated in the time frames to close those items out um, and then work with you on, on getting that information. And, then, and hopefully, you know, we at the end of that session, we can give, you know, here's our recommendation. So here's our pre-approval that, you know, as a team, we're going to submit to my OSHA management a recommendation moving forward. And that may be instead of a recommendation to be at that MVP level. It could be maybe at that rising star. It could be others that have along that path itself. So we should be very clear on what our recommendation is before we leave the site itself. And uh, with that process for, for full review, um, occurring with our MyOSHA management, actually all the way to our, our director of MyOSHA would, would have a final review and determination. So with the policy and program, there's a lot that's to it from the application to the evaluation. Uh, one thing I strongly encourage those that are on the call that are looking to either apply or working towards that, you can you can print off or, or review our our voluntary protection program policy and procedures. So if you want to know how are we going to perform our interviews as we talked about, what is an opening conference going to look like? What is the on-site assessment look like? Um, what are the requirements going forward? Um, they're they're very well defined, just like our national uh, the Fed a voluntary protection program policy. We have our own within Michigan that, that continues to evolve and we try to be as transparent as possible. We do talk about our approach uh, being somewhat hybrid. Um, 
as a result of, of COVID itself, uh, all organizations have really changed in a lot of processes. And, and so have we here at Myosha, where, you know, previously we would come to the site and, and begin to request those documents. And, and that process has changed now where, you know, we're able to facilitate some of those conversations via platforms just like we're doing here today. So we have the capability of using Microsoft Teams, Zooms, or others um, to begin to collect the, those documents. So typically about a month or so before we come on site, we should have a dialogue with you and say, hey, what is your facility requirements? Um, here are some documents that we would like to look at ahead of time. And over the course of the next couple of weeks, let's have that dialogue so that when we come to your site, we have a much better understanding about your systems in place, and we can begin our walkthroughs and, and further assessment. From a timeline perspective, what we typically do um, is we ask that you fill out the application, and I would say that there are companies that are all in all different places when they fill out that application from just starting to filling out parts of it to having it complete. And uh, if you have any questions about those, don't hesitate to give myself or my colleagues a call and we'll, we'll help you through that piece. But once your application is submitted, you know, that's going to be reviewed by our MyOcean management. And if that application is approved, that's when we'll begin to have the dialogues about, OK, the next step. When can we schedule time to come to your location? When can we perform that evaluation and begin that? And in any given year, we're, we're probably doing between eight to ten evaluations um, for reevaluations as well as new applications. So we try to work with the resources we have with our MyOSHA consultants along with your organization to come up with the best date for that. Let me pause there, Erica. Any questions on timelines or anything prior to that? There are no additional questions in the chat. All right, thank you, sir. So I'd like to talk about mentoring opportunities, and I really believe this is a way for companies to be successful, not only in the application process, but moving forward, if you do reach that MVP level itself and, and continually improving. So within our 25 sites of both general industry and construction, one of the requirements is that if you make it to that level and you become part of that network, we require you to continue to mentor others. And so there may be other facilities or companies or personnel that want to learn more about the VPP process or understand how you have gone through that process itself. And so we have that same requirement for those that have met that level. And so on our website, if you go on their MVP website in Myosha, you'll find that it's got a list of all 25 of those facilities. Uh, both from construction as well as general industry. And each one of those industries will have a point contact that will have a phone number and an email. And these are fantastic resources we have through our organization. So if you have questions on, you know, how did um, how did Great Lakes production go through the process? Um, how about Dow performance or DT energy or how is Holly Construction performing these health and safety management systems? If you give them a call, they are very open to help work with you on the process. Um, and in many cases, they'll invite you to the facility where you can see or observe how that system works. Um, so take advantage of, of what we've posted and the resources that you have. They can certainly help you along your journey of applying and, and hopefully becoming a member of our group. So on, the, on our same MVP website, um, you'll find that there's several different documents that you can reference, but the easiest way to apply is to hit the apply today button. And that's going to take you to our application guideline and you can begin to fill out that comprehensive document that goes with it. 
once you finish that application, you submit that to our MVP manager who reviews that process itself. And uh, hopefully uh, once that's been accepted or modified for level where it can, then uh, we'll begin the, uh, the evaluation process itself. So what can you expect to provide in your application? So once again, the guidelines will give you examples of how to fill that out. It's going to have forms that need to be filled out as well. But we're going to start with your injury and illness rates. As we mentioned, you know, understanding your industry or your NAICS code. You know, have you met that criteria or being at or below those injury rates for three consecutive years? If you're two out of the three, do you fall within our potential rising star process itself? So filling out that application is something that not only we, we start on the front end, but as companies uh, meet that status level, we'll ask for those injury rates for, for years ongoing as well. We want to see that management statement of commitment. You know, we want to understand that this, this process is going to continue to move forward and you're going to drive for that continuous improvement of exemplary health and safety management systems. And as we mentioned before, if there's representation from your union, we want them part of the process. We want employees engaged in that process itself. Did I did we lose anybody here? I can, I, can, can you, can you, I can still can hear and see um, your uh, screen. Um, there is an additional question. It is how long does a typical application review process take? Okay, great question. So that'll be a perfect lead into our next one. But can you see my screen again? Yes. All right, excellent. So with the process itself, um, I believe we've got one coming up. So when you apply, let's say you apply today, that, that application guideline is going to be submitted and you're going to have your system defined. You know, what is your health and safety management system? What are the elements that you have and how have they been truly effective? You're going to provide us with different forms and policies that are specific to your your industry, your company. So once that's submitted to our MVP manager, that that will actually be reviewed for completeness throughout the process and verification of your injury and illness rates that go with it. And that typically takes several weeks. Um, along that path, we'll also look at your organization and ensure that one, there is not a level of MIOSHA compliance, so you don't have any open program inspections or um, injuries that are, that are currently under inspection at this time. And truly understand that you're a really a organization um, that's done very well in the community and in good faith effort. So there's a review or vetting process that takes some time. It's usually several weeks. And once that's finalized or reviewed from our MIOSHA management, that gets forwarded on to my attention where I can begin to look at the application. And that's when we start to have that dialogue of, you know, maybe getting some clarifying points on your guideline or your application and also planning ahead on when the next, when we can come on site at your facility. And, and that'll vary. So we look at the who's available from a MIOSHA consultant standpoint. So once again, we're gonna have a team of three that'll be there. That, and we work all over the state, so we try to work together to see what schedule works well for our consultants, as well as yourself. So depending on the type of year, sometimes may work better than others. So we, we try to schedule those, um, you know, depending on the availability. And so that evaluation, you know, that could take several months, it could be several weeks. It all depends upon how, what kind of time frame we come up with. Great question. Any other questions, Eric? Yes. Do the members of the MVPP ranked companies meet annually to allow mentoring to be 
open discussion or is it up to each to communicate externally? A great question. So twofold, um, we do get together or make it an option to get together several times a year. So the companies that are part of our MVP network, once again, they're located all over the state. And so we have what's called a spring and a fall mentors meeting where we usually, the spring meeting is usually done in conjunction with the Michigan Safety Conference. So it's usually the day before the safety conference where we'll get together and then we ask representatives from each site to attend. And it's usually a full day session where we talk about things that are working. We talk about things that need to be improved in our process. We share best practices. We look at how we can mentor others. And so we create those forums um, at both a, a spring conference as well as a fall conference where we typically will do that at another MVP location. So you can get really the boots on the ground and see how their operation or construction site is currently working. Um, Along with that, you can continue to mentor others along the way. So um, you'll find that companies will contact you or maybe internally as an organization, you have all their facilities that are interested in that. So we do, do allow that flexibility of either working individually as a company or working con in conjunction with their other team members. Great question. Any others, Eric? There are no other questions at this time. Thank you, sir. All right, so we, we talked briefly about some of these pieces, but here's that application process. So you've applied, you filled out that application guideline that's been submitted to our MyOSHA management who reviews that and checks for that level of, of history that you have in your organization. And hopefully if you've had any sort of inspections or programs, those have been closed out. And that would be the expectation that it, it has before you file. Um, we would verify based on your injury, you know, what the incidence rates you have and are they accurate compared to the BLS standards that we, we have as well. So those are part of that initial review that we share. Now, commonly I get questions from companies saying, you know, where do we stand, you know, from a company? How do I know how effective my programs are or that do we have exemplary systems in place? And one of the easiest tools to, to utilize is built within our application guidelines. And it's not a requirement to fill this out, but it's a great self check guide. And so what we've done is we've itemized those five elements that we were referring to. Management leadership, workplace analysis, health and safety training, so on and so forth. And so as a group, I would highly encourage that you print this checklist off and work together as a team to say, you know, let's evaluate ourselves. Let's have employees that are performing maintenance or operations. Let's have our frontline supervisors. Let's have our safety committee, whoever that may be, part of that evaluation. And so it's a great checks and balances to say, Yep, I think we're meeting the requirements of the MVP program. Or, you know, there's probably some areas that we need to close the gap on. And maybe we put a plan in place to close the gap on and we apply down the road. And that's OK. You know, I would confidently say we probably have hundreds of organizations in the state of Michigan that are at some level of this application, whether they're just beginning to look at where the options are, to maybe they're filling out portions of it, or they're filling out, you know, they're working on a strategy to really get to that level. And eventually they do, which is great. And so there's a checklist. I would, like I said, I highly recommend you print out Appendix A of our guideline and uh, utilize that as kind of a self assessment tool. We got a whole chat one question. Um, Alan writes At my 50 employee work site, I would be the point person for applying along with our general manager. We are part of a bigger company. Um, would the regional health and safety director or the national health and safety vice president also be directly involved with MyOSHA 
the program application process? A great question. So um, this is a kind of a typical facility when we come to the number of employees or process. So it's not uncommon to have companies that are a subsidiary of others or maybe to a headquarters within another state to some degree. How you apply is up to you. So typically it's the site and the site management that we're going to be working with uh, initially. So as the safety lead or the management lead, that would probably be the person that would apply for it. Um, if you want to bring in your regional group or external resources to help along that path, you certainly can do so. And you know, a lot of times during these evaluations, companies will bring in other members of their teams from even other states to some degree just to observe the process, and that's okay. Um, but if you want to just limit it to your site, your location, and your processes, that's more than acceptable. It's a, so we see a really a combination thereof. question. Any other items, Eric? Uh, not at this time. So hopefully as you go through the process and you fill out your application, we've had an opportunity to do that on-site evaluation. Let's say you make it through that process itself and we formally recognize you as a STAR facility. At that point, we would recognize you with a flag and, and a plaque itself where you could you could share that flag and, and, and fly that flag at your location. We also provide you with what's called an MVP logo. Um, some facilities like to utilize that on their correspondence or emails and letters and company documents. So it certainly is a very challenging uh, approach to health and safety management systems. But it, it's highly effective and we've seen companies do to utilize this over and over again. Um, it's not out of reach by any means. And once again, I, I want to emphasize that we're not looking for perfection, but we are looking for that emphasis to continue to improve and get towards those exemplary health and safety management systems. And so like I said, we, we know companies, industries, products are all at different levels um, at your site. And, and hopefully with a partnership with us, we can help you along that way. So I do want to mention that if you you get to the level and you've been received that level of award, that that's not the last time we're going to have conversations. So um, as mentioned before, our, our facilities get together uh, on some frequency. We have dialogue and, and meetings throughout the course of the year so that we create that continual learning environment. Um, and at some point, if you want to maintain that MVP level status, we actually perform a, a secondary site reevaluation. So within general industry, five years from when you receive that initial award, we would come on site and perform a very similar reevaluation. Re the difference is that instead of looking at everything from a comprehensive approach, at that time we would look at the changes that may have occurred throughout that process itself. So it's much more truncated in that fashion. If your construction site, the frequency is moved up a little bit more. Once again, between 18 and 24 months, we would do a secondary reevaluation, maybe tertiary and so on and so forth, pending the situation and service that you provide. Um, but we, we do have, or we do expect companies to perform their own annual evaluations. So we created a form, it's very similar to the one that we have with the federal BPP, where companies, at least at a high level, they're providing information to us, typically earlier, first part of the year, saying, here's our processes, here's what's changed, if any, or maybe some things haven't, but continuing to provide information to us from a self-evaluation. And then, like I said, we wouldn't come back to that location for either five years for GI industries or general industry or 18 and 24 months for construction. But we, we do what we do say is that the MVP participants, they are exempt from my OSHA program inspections while they maintain that status itself. And so that's one of the caveats or one of the um, outline expectations is that if you continue to meet that status, you will not have a program inspection at your location. Now, 
there can be inspections if there is an employee complaint, concern, or serious injury or incident, which in many cases are far and few between for our MVP sites because they have very robust exemplary health and safety management systems. But as long as you maintain that MVP status, then we will not perform program inspections at your location. That makes sense, everybody. Just a couple slides here. We'll open it up for further questions. So once again, it's a, it's a great program in place. It has been around and involved really for several decades with our team. They've done an excellent job over the years, um, working you know hand in hand with our MVP sites, our rising star sites, or, the, or those companies that are working towards that. It's just a great service and venue for the state of Michigan. Um, my colleagues and I, we get, like I said, we get a chance to work with organizations such as yourselves each and every day. And if you have any questions on either the application process or the assessment itself or what we do and perform our tasks, we have consultants in each one of your areas that can help address some of these questions or come to your site and have that dialogue. So I provided uh, uh, my direct line number here. I'll make sure that's in the PDF document as well. Um, and also our CET main line number. Once again, you know, we're coming from an educational perspective. We want to create that joint partnership with you and continue to create that safe work and environment and follow the mission here at my ocean. So with that, uh, I will pause. Um, Open this up for any questions from members on the call or clarifications on anything at this time. There are no questions in the chat. I'll take a moment to plug our M Sharp program. If you have less than 250 employees on site and less than 500 employees corporate wide, and you aren't sure that you're ready for the VPP evaluation. Um, we have a separate set of consultants that would be um, more than happy to come out and do a hazard survey and um, help you determine if you have implemented a excellent safety and health management system. There's one uh, additional question in the chat. Have you had any healthcare organizations participate in any part of the VPP program? Yeah, a great question. Uh, just a, a caveat on to what Eric had said. Uh, with our M Sharp program itself, it's a great venue to take that next stepping stone and move into the MVP position itself. Um, I have worked with many healthcare sectors. Um, currently, we do not have any that are MVP status at this point but I'm working with several of them that are at various stages of it. And so some of the organizations within the healthcare sector and any other issue of that manner is at some level of the application. So it could be that um, the situation I'm in right now, I'm actually working at those sites uh, from a compliance standpoint, showing them things that I may be observing that they could close the gap on. And once again, there's no financial penalty with it, but here are some things that we may be looking for that you wanna work on over the next couple of months or years to close the gap before you apply for MVP. Um, I have other industries, including the healthcare, which are asking you know, myself and my counterparts to look at some of their policies or their programs or help with training or getting them to that level itself. So um, with the MVP process, it's, it's uh, really caters towards any type of, of industry or sector. And um, without looking at the, uh, the National Registry, I know there's somewhere around 1,200 companies that are part of it, and I know healthcare is. So it's definitely a possibility, and it's, it's a great, uh, great uh, operation that could be included into our network. Great question. Any other questions from our, our members on the call?
we had a couple of new comments. Um, I imagine COVID control policies and practices are looked at, correct? They are. It's a great question. And actually, some of those protocols actually triggered our process of using a hybrid approach that we use today. Um, but before we come on site, we work with each facility and we work with your policies and procedures. Um, so we have our internal COVID practices that we have as consultants before we come on site and controls that we put in place. But we also want to observe what you have at your location itself. So there are things that we can do to make that more efficient than others. Um, you know, as mentioned, we can perform some things using our hybrid approach of Microsoft Teams, for instance, or doing our document review offsite, or limiting our access or distancing when we're performing interviews. So we definitely have those conversations at each one of our locations, and we work together to come up with a plan in place. Great question. And then um, there was a request to add the presentation to the chat. Can you remind us how you can provide the PowerPoint to participants? Sure. So what I'll do is I'll actually, I will repost it in the chat, and uh, I also will provide my email as well. So if you have any further questions or comments, and actually I'll just type it in right now, um, don't hesitate to contact me and I can forward that information over to you. Or did that go through? Another venue, um, if you're looking for more information on the process itself, you can contact me and we could set up a, a special session with you and your company or members of your team to you know talk about some of the specific components of the application or that evaluation process in person so don't hesitate to make those calls uh, that's something that we do here every week great question i did add my email out in point contact and and I'll provide that copy of the of the PDF document here as well. Any other questions from our team members? All right. If there's not, I, I greatly appreciate everybody coming to our informational workshop. Um, I encourage you to apply or or begin that process to develop that journey of truly exemplary health and safety management systems. Um, you know, I know each and every one of our industries and facilities, both from a general industry and construction phase, are more than capable of getting to that point. And uh, hopefully we can help you along that journey. So I thank you all for participating and good luck in your future endeavors. Take care, everyone.